What is good on guys and welcome back to the channel. So on today's video, I wanted to make this a little bit more of a personal one, a bit more of a business related one and actually talk about my journey to where I am now and essentially try and give as much advice as I can to those that may be watching this within their 20s and you know maybe just needing a little bit of kind of career advice or direction of where they're looking to take things. The reason why I want to do this is because I have had people ask me, younger people, about how I got into the industry, about you know what got me into coaching. Lots of people ask me that, how long I've been coaching for. So I thought I'd just kind of run through what my journey has looked like to get to where I am now. Like as a young entrepreneur that's a business owner, that's built a business, that's got staff that work for him. And essentially that journey, which has kind of got me to where I am now. So starting off with the beginning in terms of where it all began, I'm going to try not to talk too much on this. I could probably sit and create an entire video on my beginning. It's not that interesting, but there's a lot to talk about. So it all started for me, like I've always been into fitness. So essentially, even when I was at school, I would play loads of sports. You know, I was um, captain of the rugby team. Um, I used to do a lot when I was young. I actually probably used to play too many sports because it meant I was probably never really incredible at one because I was doing so many I was kind of good at lots of sports and I've always had a massive passion for fitness I like guess not something I've just kind of fallen into because I didn't know what to do and then from there it kind of just led me to start studying things like PE and then essentially from there go and do a degree in sports science which is what took me to Portsmouth University so then studying sports science I did my personal training qualification alongside of it pretty much opened up my first initial route into the fitness industry so whilst I was studying at Portsmouth I ended up getting a job at David Lloyd, which is where I started my fitness career. This is probably when I was about 20 years old. And I just started off on the gym floor. So I literally was just a health and fitness coach. I was taking classes. I was taking inductions. You know, I was just helping people, like talking to people, you know, getting familiar with things and just slowly starting to build up my knowledge. And this genuinely felt like it was my passion, my industry. I felt like it was something that I could really see myself in for the foreseeable. Although I still didn't really know what I wanted to do. And I also realized pretty quickly that I didn't necessarily want to work for someone else. I didn't like being told what to do. I had a boss that I didn't like, that I didn't get on with. And it just kind of created a bit of friction within my lifestyle that, yeah, I wasn't a massive fan of at this current moment of time. Now, anyway, I'm a massive believer that everything happens for a reason. And sometimes things that actually seem bad end up being good things. And essentially ended up getting fired from that job at David Lloyd as a personal trainer. Nothing bad, essentially not doing a pull test, which led to being gross misconduct. And it ended up me you know, leaving as a 21 year old, you know, not really know what to do. I wasn't living at home. I was still living in Portsmouth, it's not where my family are from. And I didn't have a job. I was actually competing at the time or prepping towards being doing my first bodybuilding competition again with no job, which isn't great when you've got the sort of funding needed to be able to do this. And essentially, this is what actually got me into my journey of entrepreneurship and actually building a business myself and working for myself because I then went to Pure Gym and started working in self-employment. And I started from the ground bottom. I was personal training there. I knew a few people. I maybe took like two clients with me. And then I started building and, you know, hustling there in terms of being able to build up my client base because I needed money. I didn't have much money at the time and I wasn't living at home, you know. This, in my advice when it comes to being a youngster and really wanting to grow as quick as possible is you need to get out of comfort, you know. You need to move away from home. You need to go and rent and be on your own and be in an environment that forces you to be having to, you know, pay things a month, have bills to pay for. This is what creates that hustle mindset of, you know, needing to make money. And essentially, that's where I was with things. I could have easily just, you know, gone home and, and essentially gone back to living with my parents again, but I didn't want to do that. So from there, that's when I got into my journey of self-employment. I started building up my client base. And again, you know, I um, believe that things happen for a reason. And COVID came around and kind of knocked me off my horse just as I was about to kind of go on to gym rent and start again, like taking the next step in terms of my career. And at that point, I thought everything was failed. I thought everything that I'd worked hard to achieve from a client base was gone and that's when i discovered online coaching so for me online coaching at that point it was you know a bit of a thing because everyone was not able to be face to face with their clients or in in general so that's when i got into building my online coaching program and building fit lab and investing myself and finding mentors and growing and essentially that's what kind of slowly kept on building to actually get to the point as to what leads me to phase number two which is taking the leap now after covid what happened is I was in a position as to where, you know, I moved back to Portsmouth, I had to move home initially because I, there was no point in me being in Portsmouth. Everyone was locked down, so I thought it'd be better to be with my family. Built the online coaching and it was time to go back to Portsmouth. And I went into a flat down there by myself, again, like putting myself out there. I didn't want to stay at home. I wanted to put myself back into an environment as to where it forced me to, to want to grow. So essentially at that point, I was kind of working between 
so two jobs like i had my online clients and then i also had my face-to-face -face clients that i was working with again and i was just doing a bit of face-to-face -face. i was kind of doing like this hybrid approach now when i say taking the leap you know a lot of people kind of you know you get this idea that you need to go all in and you need to leave your nine to five and you need to go and do your your hustle and your side project and that will build essentially like i'm not a massive believer of that and that's not what i did so it's not something that i'm going to recommend to other people like, I think you need to create a safety net first before you go away and go all in on something else because you don't want the stress and the anxiety of thinking like, shit, I need to make this work because I've, I've got no money coming in at all when that doesn't need to be the case. Like for me to build online coaching, it doesn't take a huge amount of my time. You know, I can work it and do it in the evenings with personal training. It's, you know, very easy to be able to kind of work your day so you've got time blocks around it. So I didn't decide that I was going to go and essentially leave PT straight away. So I managed to find a setup for me in terms of like a bit of a hybrid approach where I was able to coach my clients one-to-one -one at a gym where I just had to pay like five pound a session to coach them and do my own line as well. So I didn't have to be sort of, you know, somewhat employed by Pure Gym or kind of semi-employed as it was a self-employment model they used. I didn't have to be part of them. I could just work in an independent gym. I could pay a bit of money and I could just wait until my online clients built. And they did. And it got to the point pretty quickly where my online income surpassed my face-to-face -face income, which is the point where you know that you can then leave that's the way that i look at it when you've got enough income coming from your side hustle that you know your passion what you really enjoy you can leave what it is that potentially is holding you back that's when i decided to go all in and then actually start focusing fully on my online then that moves me nicely into step number three so this is when i was fully online okay i had all the time in the world to build a business i still didn't really know what i was doing at that point so i wasn't like a massive expert by any means at all you know i look back at some of my content and some of the ways that i used to coach back then and it kind of makes me cringe a little bit but it's a learning process. So building the business took years. You know, FitLab didn't even get launched probably to like a year after I actually left that initial job you know, as a personal trainer. But the one thing that I will say, and the thing that anyone young needs to do, or anyone not even young, like whoever's looking, listening to this video right now, is the power of investment. And I'm not just saying this as a coach, saying, you know, come and invest in my program. I'm saying investment in yourself is the most important thing that you will ever, ever do. There is no point in even investing your money into other things that are gonna make you richer until you've made yourself the best version possible. Okay? To this day now, I still invest thousands of pounds every single month into my own learning and my own education. Every single month. I've spent loads of money to this day. I wouldn't even know how much money I've spent, probably even up to a hundred thousand pounds in investment of mentorships, of learning things, lots of different things over the course of this last five years. And I wouldn't be where I am today without that. So building my business came down to investment. It came down to finding people to help me. You know, I invest in different mentorships. I invested in, you know, coaching towards my actual mental performance. I even had a sleep coach at one point who was helping me improve my sleep quality so I could be more productive and I could get more done and I'd have more hours in the day and all this kind of stuff. That's what came down to building a business, okay? Actually understanding properly from other people that had been and done that thing that I was then able to go and do it myself. Yeah, I wouldn't be where I am without those kind of people. And then looking at things like YouTube, reading books, like I never thought I was someone that enjoyed reading until I got into entrepreneurship and I started to love reading and learning new things you know, every single day, every single week. Reading is such a crazy thing because you can literally learn someone's entire life secrets. Like guys that are worth billions, that have built billion dollar companies, that put all their learning into a book. It's like 300 pages and you can learn that shit for free. All you have to do is pick it up and read it. Read it multiple times if you feel like sometimes you struggle taking things in properly and you can learn so much. So for me, reading, YouTube videos, investments, mentorships, like all these different things slowly got me to the point as to where I started to build a credible business. I had a reputation. I kind of started to become, you know, somewhat the kind of go-to coach at that point in my area, which was still pretty much on the South Coast. And then eventually that's what led me to come and move to Dubai and really take it to the next level, start building leverage, team, all that kind of stuff, and actually understand what's required to build a proper business that actually operated at a higher level. Now, before I get onto the last bit, which is centered around, you know, getting your time back, getting some freedom i want to go over the bit that i don't want to miss and that is overcoming challenges now there is absolutely no one out there in terms of you know being a business that's done well with their career that hasn't had so many setbacks so many challenges so many things go wrong 
that you have to overcome. I've had this so many times on so many different levels. You know, sometimes it might have been slightly less, like, you know, getting your Instagram account banned or something like that, which I've had to deal with or hacked, which I've had to deal with. An employee fucking me over, which again, I had at a certain point during my career as well, which I had to deal with, take on their clients, even coach at the time. You know, so many different things that as a business owner, you don't know what's around the corner. You know, tons of clients maybe leaving at certain points as well, which you're like, oh shit, like I've just lost, you know, half of my income. These things happen all the time. Not so much now because I feel like I've, you know, accustomed myself towards these things and I don't necessarily get as down as what I used to about it. I understand business and I think my stress tolerance has improved a lot. But things go wrong. And anyone who's watching this now he thinks that building a business and, you know, being an online coach and being an entrepreneur is easy and you can travel around, you can go to Thailand and you can go to all these different places and enjoy yourself without the stress of running a business is bullshit. I get stressed every day. I'd probably say that most of the time I'm stressed and maybe not even in a great mood and worrying about things and being anxious, then I am actually happy. That is life as an entrepreneur. That is life as a business owner. That is just the way that it is. And you are constantly overcoming challenges, overcoming problems. And that will always be the case. And as the business grows, the challenges and the problems start to become bigger. However, you start to become better at dealing with them. That's the only other thing. You can start to think more tactically, you can ground yourself more, and you can start to understand and overcome these challenges a lot better. So step four is realizing that you are gonna have things that go wrong. It's not all plain sailing, and there are issues, and there are things that are making this life hard. So many people aren't grounded for this life. So many people are just accustomed for the nine to five. They don't want risk, they don't want stress. They wanna just have this nice, safe, easy life of just, you know, settling and not really kind of ever reaching that full potential and probably not actually being fully fulfilled. One thing that I can say to myself is that I, I really seek and I feel like I'm very fulfilled as a person. Like growing as a business fulfills me, helping people fulfills me, not even necessarily earning money, the earning money comes with that alongside that, but just, you know, fulfill, finding fulfillment in other areas of my life is what I really focus on. And this lastly leads me on to step number five, which is pretty much where I'm at now with my business, which I'm still trying to learn, I'm still developing, and I'm certainly not there yet. I'm not trying to make out I'm some, you know, mega entrepreneur because I'm, I'm not. There are people that are my age, that are younger than me, that are way ahead of where I am, but I'm just giving my own past experience and my journey. Step number five is about creating freedom, creating leverage, and actually building a team and actually working with people that you genuinely enjoy working with and that you wanna be with that can help you grow your mission, your passion, and take it to that next level, which is the stage that I'm at now and probably have been in the last 12 months. Now, a lot of you guys know, Matt, my brother, he is part of my business now, full-time. He's our head coach. He's done incredibly well. He came out of a career in the police and joined FitLab full-time as a coach and as someone that's worked with me ever since then, which of course for me was extremely scary at the time and my entire family depending on you know, me being able to provide for Matt, for me to be able to, to give him the work that he, he needs essentially. And it was the best thing that ever happened to not only us and our relationship, but the business as well. Like we've massively grown since Matt's been on board. He's happy, he's fulfilled. And we know where we wanna be with things now. But the reason why this is important as a business owner to myself is that Matt has given me so much more time to improve on the business. You know, me at the start would have been completely bogged down with so many clients in a good way, but I wasn't able to grow the business. I wasn't able to improve on the business because I was just so caught up in the day-to-day -day of coaching and doing this and doing that and doing that. Whereas Matt now as a head coach, and even then since taking on another coach, Owen, who's been incredibly good since he's, take, since he's joined us as well, they are now in the ability to be able to look after our clients. And I can focus on, you know, coaching them and making sure they're being the best coaches and actually improving on the education, the coaching systems, like how can we improve? How can we get better client results in a shorter time? And how can we educate and do better with our clients? I've got the time to do that now that I didn't have before. That is what leverage is about in terms of building businesses. And that actually means that, you know, I'm able to take more downtime, I'm able to have more freedom now. Like I'm not having to do, you know, hundreds of check-ins a week, which I was previously, because I've got help now. I know that my team are gonna be able to deliver them and still do them at an incredibly high standard. Like I know that they're coaching the clients as well. Like look at the results that we get a fit lab on my page. Most of those results posted recently aren't even from me, they're from my team. So I know that they're being coached at a good standard. And this is what business is like. It's about building team on people in, that are able to help you. You know, I've got people that help me with my lead generation. I've got people that help me with my marketing, people that help me with, you know, writing captions and writing posts. And I'm still in the process of building. I've by no means got a, a massive team, but it's something that I'm slowly, you know, improving on and increasing over time. As I know the power of kind of buying my own time back now and building leverage within my business. You know, I know that I can be the best CEO. I can be the best coach if I've got more time to be able to do these things that are important as a business owner. So when you get to this stage, you know, when you've you know, 
build the reputation up, you know what you're doing, you've got a, a decent amount of, of clients, you've got a good, fully functioning business. You try and pull yourself away from another kind of day-to-day -day grind and tasks within in the business that you're doing before. You can work on the business and work on improving it and you know sailing that ship and taking it in a direction that you want it to be in. And that guys is pretty much how things work. That's my journey. That's what I recommend. This is pretty much kind of you know where I'm at now within my career. I've not been doing this that long. Fit Lab has been around for probably about four years. Essentially I've been online coaching for yeah I'd say about four years. Fit Lab maybe even has been here for three years. I can't remember to this exact date. I still feel like I'm at the start of my journey. I've by no means reached my full potential but my my business journey so far my you know journey in entrepreneurship has has been a good one and i'm very happy and i'm very fulfilled in terms of my life right now and i know where things are going so look i hope this video has maybe helped to inspire some of you that are watching this that maybe you're in your 20s maybe you're in your teens you don't really know what you're doing i think the world's changed so much in the last test not about going to university or going and getting a nine to five job and training in a certain area i think like you know being an entrepreneur creating a business you know going and living your passion is so much easier to do than it is these days like making money online is so much easier than you used to and especially if you've got something that you genuinely care about and you feel passionate about if you follow that you will find something in there that you can monetize and build and create and actually live and enjoy and just to reiterate before i end this video the power of investment i would not be the person i am today if it wasn't for investing in multiple different areas of my life so if there's something that you are trying to improve right now you're trying to grow you're trying to flourish in a certain area and you just simply can't do it you need to go in and find someone that can help you that can take away the guesswork and give you a proven framework and has a track record of helping multiple people get there themselves. So I hope you find this video useful, guys. Make sure you hit the subscribe button if you have. Make sure you hit the bell notification so you're notified every time that I post. And I will catch you in the next video.